A reading for the fifth, from the fifth book of Moses, known as Deuteronomy, chapter 26. When you have entered the land the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, and have taken possession of it and settled in it, take some of the first fruits of all that you produce from the soil of the land the Lord your God is giving you, and put them in a basket. Then go to the place the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name, and say to the priest in office at the time, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the land the Lord your, swore to your forefathers to give us. The priest shall take the basket from your hands and set it down in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean, and he went down into Egypt with a few people and lived there and became a great nation, powerful and numerous. But the Egyptians mistreated us and made us suffer, putting us to hard labor. And we cried out to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our misery, toil, and oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with great terror and with miraculous signs and wonders. He brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, O Lord, have given me. Place the basket before the Lord your God and bow down before him. You and the Levites and the aliens among you shall rejoice in all the good things the Lord your God has given to you and your household. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 9. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way, so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, Men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 12. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, 
drink and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich toward God. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is no virtue, no Christian virtue, simply to count your blessings or list the things for which you are thankful. Any pagan can do that. And many do. Almost everyone celebrates Thanksgiving. Just so, there is nothing particularly pious about producing a good crop, or being thankful for plenty of good things laid away, stored away, so that you can take life easy and eat and drink and be merry. As if you were to say, I'm so thankful for everything I have, I know what I'll do. I'll gorge myself on food, on an abundance of food, and then the next day go shopping for more stuff. There's nothing particularly godly about that. And so today, perhaps more than ever, Jesus warns us, be on guard against all kinds of greed. Because there are all kinds. One kind comes in disguise, in a form of thankfulness and abundance when your table is full and your cup runneth over. And just as, as, it is, as it is not a virtue to say thanks for plenty, neither is it a vice to have plenty. In his parable, Jesus is not warning against good crops or barns or saving or relaxing, eating, drinking, or even being merry, or shopping for more. There is no sin in abundance. You remember the story of Joseph? In the Old Testament, who wisely stored up grain in Egypt for seven years, a good years. Jesus warns against greed of all kinds. See, the problem is not in the barns. The problem is not in the bounty. Jesus says, this is, this is how it will be for he who stores up things for himself. The problem is in the self, yourself. God has not given abundance so that you could, could store up for yourself to make life easy for yourself so that you can consider only the needs of, of your own self. Joseph did not store up food in Egypt for himself, but so that he could, could feed, provide food that would feed the whole region during a severe famine. 
even to feed his estranged brothers who once tried to kill him and sold him as a slave. No, this is the disease that infects us all. It's the love of self. And how we deal with stuff often brings it out, it reveals it in us. You are a fool, Jesus says. If your confidence and your security is in your possessions. If I only have this, then I will be fine. I'll be set. You can. You can try it. You can potentially make your life very comfortable if you play your cards right. If things go your way, if you, if you make a plan and work your plan. But Jesus says, fool, your life could be demanded of you tonight. And then what will you have? Will a full green bin or bank account secure anything for you beyond that night when your life here has ended? No. For, as Jesus says, your life does not consist in all this stuff. Not the food, not the money, electronics, or equipment. Not even the, the, the precious people who sit around your Thanksgiving table. Not even your own physical well-being, your, your breath. For that will one day be taken away too. Your life, O oh Christian, is found in Christ. Both now and beyond the grave, what, what counts, what lasts, is that you be found in him. In his righteousness, in, in his incarnation, in his bloody sweat, his, his passion, his suffering, his death, burial, and resurrection. In other words, your life is to be found in his life. Live not for himself but for you. That you be found baptized into his life. That's a true treasure lasting to all eternity. That you be fed with his living body and blood, a bountiful feast that is eternally satisfying. This, O oh Christian, to receive Christ and his precious gifts, that's your life. Security, confidence, your true bounty. So that if you have this, then you have everything. Then you can say, I am well supplied. I am abundantly cared for and blessed. And so, if you have everything that you need, then what shall we do with the bounty, with the physical bounty that surrounds us. If we have been freed from the love of our own self by Jesus' love for us, well then, my dear friends, then, then you're free to look around and care for the needs of your neighbor with the bountiful blessings that God has provided. Well, then we might store up the abundance of, of good years to provide for the needs of others, maybe in a time when the bounty is less. Then we might store up. Then we might go to work, labor hard to provide for our families and, and others around us. You see, by nature, we are inclined always to turn in on ourselves. Only the love of Jesus gives us the life that, that bends us outward, outside of ourselves, so that we're free to see the needs of those around us. To be rich towards God by, by caring for the neighbors that he's placed around. Incidentally, this is also how God wishes to care for them. So that when you serve as his instrument, they might know that it is God who is caring and providing for them 
through you. But their thanksgiving will be directed towards God who gives it. As St. Paul says, we heard, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. And this kind of thanksgiving, this kind of thanksgiving will go on even if your life is demanded of you tonight. It will go on even if, even if all the bounty goes away. Even if the harvest fails or, or the money runs out, if famine or hardship or suffering or sickness or death comes. Martin Rinkert was a German Lutheran pastor in the 1600s. In the 1630s, he served in, the, in his hometown of Eilenburg. It was in the middle of the Thirty Years' War. Throughout the time, the Swedish army's troops came through and, and plundered the town, forced them to hand over their grain, their food, for, to feed the troops, to, to force them to quarter soldiers in their homes. During the same time, disease, plague, ravaged the town. In just one year, in 1637, Rinkert, the only pastor left in the town, conducted about 50 funerals a day, 4,000 that year, including that of his wife. His home became a refuge for victims, forced to mortgage his future wages so that he could provide for his family. some years before the worst of that, Rinkert wrote a hymn. He called it a little table prayer to be sung by the family at mealtimes. You know it as, now thank we all our God, which we just sang. Thankfulness is not found in abundance. It is found in Christ, a bountiful God who has graciously given of his bounty to us that we might be well supplied in him. And likewise in him might become generous to others and ever thankful. We do not find our thanks in the things that we have gathered around us. Those could very well be gone. One day they will. But we find our thankfulness in the bounteous God, bounteous God and his Son, Jesus Christ, who has given us all things that we might then turn our attention to the needs of our neighbor, using the gifts God has given us to serve them so that he might care for them as well. Now our prayer on Thanksgiving is not, oh God, thank you that you've given so much to me. Our prayer might be more like this, oh may this bounteous God through all our life be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all ills in this world and the next. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Amen. We join to sing Te Deum Laudamus. We praise you, O God.
art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, you crown the fields with your blessing and permit us to gather in the fruits of the earth. As stewards of your creation, may we receive your gifts in humble thankfulness and share your bounty with those in need. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. O oh God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.